Today I'm going to show you how to bend a stub 90 with a Chicago bender. Hi, my name is Craig Michaud and I am the electrical instructor. Today what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you to the Chicago bender. Now, some contractors have Chicago benders, some contractors don't. Now, Chicago bender makes life that much easier. It's just a ratcheting bender. You know, typically we use it to bend uh, RMC, IMC, uh, not necessarily EMT, but they do have shoes for EMT. You can bend half inch, three quarter, and one inch with a hand bender all day long. To be quite honest with you, rigid, a little bit, little bit rougher. I know early on in my career, you know, I was bending three quarter inch rigid with a one inch bender, which is a workout. Now, is that the preferred way to do it? No, it takes a little bit longer. The key is to have the right tools to do the job. So I'm gonna introduce you to a Chicago bender. I'm gonna show you how to bend a stub in this video. I'm gonna do other videos uh, with, you know, showing you how to do offsets and three-point saddles, four-point saddles with, with it also. So if you wanna see more of this stuff, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. Chicago bender is nice because what it does it allows us to it allows us to bend half inch, three quarter, and one inch conduit, all in the same shoe. So if you're on a job and you're doing a lot of uh, three quarter and one inch, this is a great tool to have on a job. They run roughly between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars to have one of these. This is a green lead type. I'll put the uh, I'll put the type the exact type here in the description below. Using these is great. Like I said, you can do it with a hand bender, but this just takes, takes all the pressure off of your body. Uh, you know, you gotta use your brain a little bit to get some measurements, but for the most part, you're good to go with a Chicago bender. You have a little dial on the front, and basically what you have to do is just basically center that in, which I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. This little dial tell, gives us our degrees, tells us how many degrees we're actually at. 1530 is what I can see right now. For the most part, we'll go through and I'll show you as we're doing this. Has a little adjustment here because we do have a little bit of an issue once we get the conduit in. We do have to adjust the shoe on its own, get it in and get it tight. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, how, I'm gonna show you, once I adjust it, I'm gonna show you where we actually put our marks on this and it has directions on the side. Now this is a newer bender. Uh, older benders may not have this here, but it's good to know. Uh, Benfield makes a nice book. They also talk about bending a Chicago, with a Chicago bender, so you might wanna check that out, okay? To bend, you're gonna run the ratchet this way. To release, you're just gonna push it forward. All we have to do now is bend. We're gonna bend a 90 stub in this video with three quarter inch rigid metallic conduit, RMC. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to measure, how to use the deducts, and then actually how to bend the 90. Okay, this is a piece of three quarter inch rigid conduit. Rigid's a thick wall conduit that you're gonna wanna use in maybe more of an exposed area um, especially explosion proof area. As we start doing more videos on code and things like that, we'll talk about better places and more places that you can use this stuff. Um, for the most part, th this is one of those skills that you're gonna learn on a job. Understanding how to do this stuff early on will only help you in your career. So, what do we do? All right, so we know that when we bend a 90, we have to measure out our stub length let's say a foot. And if we're using a three quarter inch bender, we're gonna bend it and we're gonna deduct six inches, right? So we're gonna make our mark at six. Well, with a rigid Chicago bender, our deduction is gonna be eight and a half, okay? Why is there a difference? Well, here's the thing. The shoe length is different because what we have to do is we have to keep the bend radius consistent all the way through. So what, ha what that really means is this style bender that we're using 
the take up is going to be eight and a half. Okay, so the same 12 inch stub that we're, we're going to bend by hand, we're going to be using that different deduction. Well, here's the thing. What I want you to look at it is this way. If you were to use a one inch bender, what would your deduct be? It would be eight. So when you are bending rigid conduit with a hand bender, you're going to measure your stub and deduct eight. The Chicago bender is designed to have a, their own deduction, just like our hand benders do, you know, three quarter being six, one inch being eight. This here has a difference. So we're using three quarter inch uh, conduit. Our deduct is eight and a half. So just like we measured before, we're going to take our measuring tape out. We're going to measure off and put our first mark at 12 inches. Okay, so we've got our first mark at 12 inches. Now we have to deduct eight and a half for this bender, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with my measuring tape from my mark and I'm gonna deduct eight and a half. Okay, so I'm on the eight and a half mark now. So I made my mark. Okay, most of you guys that know me know my cardinal rule is never use a Sharpie. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. When I use rigid conduit, I will use a pencil if it's gonna be exposed. If somebody can't see my marks, then I will use, I will use the Sharpie. Here's the thing. It really all depends on the job you're working on, whether you use a pencil or a Sharpie, okay? I'll tell you, for years I use Sharpies on everything, um, but for the most part, if you're putting pipe up in a ceiling and you're using Sharpie and they're painting that ceiling white, what do you think is gonna bleed through the white paint? You know, let's just think about it here, okay? So again, depending on the type of job, we'll decide on if you're gonna be using a pencil or a Sharpie. If you watch my previous videos, I'll tell you that we use a pencil. In this video here, I'm using a Sharpie only because I don't want my mark to come off and I want to make it visible for you all to see. Okay, so what do we do now? Now we have to put the conduit in the bender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on the bending shoe and I'm going to talk to you on how to adjust it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to rock the bender forward. Okay, this way here it will allow you to get the conduit in. You'll pick the conduit up. You'll slide it into the sec second groove. To where you can feel the hook. Okay. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your mark and I hope you can see that mark. Okay. So you see, this is my mark where I need to put the front of my shoe on. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this mark, this edge of my shoe has to be on this mark. So I'm going to turn that a little bit and you can see where it's off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock it back a little more. And then I'm going to put some more pressure on it. Actually, I'm going to move forward just a little bit. Okay. Okay, that's nice and tight. Okay, so now that I have my mark on the front of my shoe, okay, now I'm ready to bend. My dial needs to be at zero. And you can see where my dial is at zero. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna crank this up. Now you wanna make sure you're on a level surface, but one thing that you're gonna wanna make sure you do is you're gonna take the handle and you're gonna wanna hold some pressure on the back tripod 
Put some pressure on it, hold it to the top, and start cranking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it right, I'm going to bring it just a little bit past 90 because we're going to get that spring back of the conduit. Nope, one more. Okay, hopefully you saw that spring back. So I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to go just a little bit past it. Let it spring back. I'm right on my 90 mark here. That means I should be good to go. Okay, so to take the pipe out, you're gonna lean it all the way forward. You'll grab the conduit and you'll lift up. And what'll happen is your conduit will slide right out. And as you can see, I've got a nice 90 all set and ready to go. I'm going to go grab my tape, measure it up. I'm at 12 inches right on the money. One thing that I do want to talk to you about is the threads. I have my threads still on here. If you're threading your conduit, one of the things that you're going to want to make sure if you're doing a short stub like this, you're going to want to make sure your threads are threaded before you bend the conduit. But if you have it cut off and you're going to be adding threads onto a longer piece, that's fine. What you need to remember is the threads is what's being put into your coupling. You want to make sure that your coupling, you're measuring, if you measure to the end of the coupling, you need to add three quarter, like roughly three quarters of an inch so that you can add thread onto it to thread it into the coupling. Typically, what I always teach people is measure to the center of the coupling. You could always trim off some, uh, some threads if you need to, but at least this way here, you're always gonna be in. Okay, you're always gonna, you're never gonna be too short. Trust me, there's nothing worse than, especially when dealing with rigid, not measuring correctly, cutting things off when you're not, you know, when you really shouldn't and not adding enough for the threads. A lot of times guys that use EMT over and over and over again, when they start bending and using rigid conduit, they always end up being just a little bit short, not because of shrinkage, but because they forget the threads. I hope you learned something about bending a 90 using a Chicago bender. There's a lot of different ways to do things. This is my way. I hope this video helped. If this video helped, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. At the same time, any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And as always, have a great day and be safe.